Okay, so, you are actually looking at the time space time configuration. So, I will just go through the control structure which will be implemented for this. So, this actually now technically we are going to talk about control of digital city and I am talking about a certain specific variant which is TST configuration. Okay. So, I am going to now look into only T, S and T configuration and of course, I am going to assume that it is right cyclic, read a cyclic on this side, right a cyclic read cyclic. Okay, so, that all control memories you will be accessing the same location at any point of time. So, usually what you will be controlling in this switch that is the first question. So, that will actually decide what kind of actions have to be applied. So, it is like kind of building up uh, what we call basic instruction set of a machine. So, there is a basic instruction set of a switch also correspondingly. So, basic operations you have to identify. And what basically we are doing is there are control memories for all three systems and what we are doing is we are just putting in writing into those control memory. Rest everything keep on happening and this being done by the circuits all the time. So, that is our objective and there are basically three components which will be there. So, these components are the first one is switch itself. You take a time switch, its control memory, how you write into that, how it is being read out, that is the control interface. Okay. So, whatever the bu address, the bus, data bus, address bus, everything which goes into control memory, that is your interface and that is the switch control which we have already talked about while looking for the implementation. Similarly, for a space switch again it is a memory, it is in a column it will figure out which particular junction have to be switched on in which particular time slot. So, again it is a control memory that is a switch control. Again third stage time similar kind of structure. Next we are going to always have a switch block control. Now, this whole combination itself can be called as a switching block, a larger size switching block and we would like to communicate there will be a master command which will be now sending information to individual switch controls leading to the whole switch block to be controlled actually. Each individual has to be uh, separately referred or separately the information has to be pumped into that and then of course, uh, that is a switch block control usually will be implemented in hardware, but then switch block control has to be given information by somebody who is looking into destination address, how the call has to be set up and then based on that it will be doing some kind of routing calculation to whom it has to be forwarded everything. So, that most intelligent software entity running in the system has to talk to switch block control. So, that particular control is known as exchange control system. Okay. Uh, of course, with SIP telephony all this has been now done away with. We actually have technically removed switching and transport functionality separately. It has been done totally separate. Currently, transport is much more tightly integrated with the uh, switching as of now, because I am setting up a transport path, there you do not do any setup of transport paths. Switching runs in IP layer, it is independent of transport. So, far you can set up a TCP connection between two entities, you create a transport, but you do not tell IP layer what has to be done, what not has to be done. Here both are tightly integrated, because it is circuit switching system. There you actually create a overlaid circuit over a packet switching system, that is the only difference. So, that actually creates more decoupling there. So, these are three things and now the switch block control, which 
which is this. I am not bothered about this, I will talk about the message types. I am more interested in this, this we have already done anyway. So, there are actually now categories which you will be doing. Through this, you have to somehow set up the path from incoming port to outgoing port. So, first function will be always set up of a path. I am now giving a sample, which is a hypothetical uh, sample as of now, but it is very close to reality. In real switch implementation, whenever a manufacturer does it, he will make his own listing. So, if you are actually going to design a complete switch from scratch, you have to build up your own listing of what all operations will be required. Maybe when you will build up your first version, it will go into use, you will figure out something is missing, some more functionalities have to be added. You will even add those and redesign the switch, version 2 will come. So, iteratively once it becomes stable, you release it as a product actually. So, this is one of those identification, but it is more or less what almost everybody does and the forward and reverse paths are set up separately, so that your switch is much more general. Usually you will say voice circuit is always going to be bi-directional, if I talk to you, you also talk to me, okay. but then that is not a general switch. Tomorrow I might require, I might have a requirement where I talk and 100 people will listen. But the problem is remaining 100 people, when they will talk back, there will be so much of even the noise which is being picked up. So, those 100 people, I will sum up the noise itself is going to be higher than signal actually. So, usually reverse channels are switched off at that point of time or they will be routed through a different place and then it will be selected, one of those depending on who is active, depending on the voice activity. I require some such that kind of structure, so I should be able to set up each direction separately that usually will the way I will be designing, because it gives me much more flexibility in design. When I want only point to point voice circuit to be set up, I can set up front and reverse simultaneously, but as two separate connections. So, setting up of path, so unidirectional and bidirectional, there are two options in this case again. So, there are two kind of messages. So, this message has to be given by exchange control to the switch block control. So, there is exchange master command which is going to, so there is switch block control which controls these and the exchange control is sitting here. This is the message which has to go, unidirectional as bidirectional both options have to be there. Control is switch, switch control, that is a switch control last. But control memory will be written by switch block control. Yes. So, depending on control memory switch anyway is getting controlled by the circuit, by the hardware. Okay. Second thing which you will be doing is of course, once you set up you have to clear down. It can also be unidirectional or bidirectional, both. Okay. And I think we should expect very similar things also should be happening in uh, SIP based system, but SIP is I think more general. It is not only voice, but many other media types also which can be hooked on to. See, sometimes for example, a call is not through still, you have not started billing, voice has not happened but you would like to reserve a path for certain time. Okay, you have not set up the complete path, it is not being, but you keep it blocked, because if you do not block it and you send some the next guy key, you set up the signal, you set up the signal, you set up the signal and by the time the confirmation comes, this path has been already taken over by somebody else. Most of the real life switches are not strictly non blocking, they are all blocking switches. So, that is why if you decide that I would like to try to set up this particular connection, you have to make a reservation then send the request forward. The next exchange will also again do the setup and forward the request and once the confirmation comes in the reverse direction, all reservations gets confirmed actually and then you do the setup of path. So, path gets cleared and every day it will start actually working, the status bit will actually be changed for every 
port or every uh, path actually. So, you require reservation of paths. Again, this can be unidirectional or bidirectional. This guy is informing him. So, there is a restriction on being making a reservation, and anybody can do. Everybody will be making a reservation for that. There is no everybody, there is only one exchange control which is commanding the switch block. <laughs> See, I am not talking about you telling somebody to make the reservation. As a result of your interview, you are talking to some line card here, the information is going being pumped onto this exchange control. So, whatever signaling you are doing, your phone is doing with the exchange is never being given to switch block control directly, no. It is being trapped or even PRI, if there is a signaling channel that is being trapped and goes to the master software. This in turn is going to send the message to switch block control, there is no direct thing, you cannot make direct things. You talk with your own language which is specified for you. This is user to network interface specification, UNI specifications. Now, that is a generic term being used. Depending on uh, kind of network, uh, this UNI specifications will be different. For you, you have now DTMF tone. You look for a dial tone, you will dial number. That is only limited thing which you can do, nothing much. He is doing, he will figure out whether I should actually make a reservation or not. If the path itself is not available, I will not make reservation. That's true, but what the criteria to make the reservation? That's what I Suppose if this particular port is busy, I want to send it to some say Delhi. Delhi all lines are all ports are busy anyway. There is I anyway will not be able to forward the request. So I will deny the call there itself. So I will not make any reservation. It knows from the status table that these ports are busy or it can inquire about the status of the call, various ports which are towards Delhi. This uh, reservation is within the exchange or between two exchanges sir? Within the exchange I have to set up a path from input port to output port. I have to make a reservation before I forward my request for further setup. See technically what you are doing, you are not only reserving these, but you are also reserving this line, outgoing line also to the next exchange, because this cannot then cannot be used, this slot cannot be used by anybody else to route the call to next section. In, in what scenario the, the master plug will make the reservation? That is not clear. When you make a call, how the call is made? Question is this, the call is your, your instrument talks to the box, the exchange. Exchange if it sets up a path, send a request here sets up the path. The question is I want to actually make sure that I can clear it pretty fast. Well, this is one of the ways is you set up the path, you keep on and then inform the next guy he sets up the path, he informs the next guy he sets up the path and everything. Usually this is where it is never done. The reservation means those tables nobody can write they are logged currently, it is like semaphore. I will write the final value when things are okay, but nobody else is permitted to write because I am still trying to set up. Because this guy talks to him, this guy talks to him, this guy talks to him, this does, and then when he picks up the handset, that time the confirmation comes and this confirmation back propagates, and this will remove the ringing uh, tone which you are listening at that point of time. And all reserved path will be then confirmed and the path will be set up immediately. See, problem is the paths you have to identify, you have to understand what is happening. When the path is being set up from input to output port, you have to identify which particular intermediate slot is available. You have to identify a lot of things, you have to do computation. And this computation does take time. Once the computation has been done, now let us take two scenarios. Uh, first scenario is let there be no reservation something comes to me okay, and I am not bothered, I know this is okay. So, I say this particular line I can use. So, I send key, okay, I probably can set up because input output is free and some resources as of now are available, I have not blocked them. 
I just estimated the resources by their status. It is available, you set up the connection. Okay. You then it keeps on happening till it goes to the last guy. Nobody has set up the connection, they have only identified resources that it is possible to set up. There is no confirmation. It actually puts a ringing current, this guy lifts the handset. Once the confirmation comes, now its job is to set up the path. Okay. It only knows about the IO ports, which have been freezed, not the internal paths. Now, it, everybody has to do a computation. Once the computation is done, this confirmation will be happening and a path will be set up. Again a computation is done, path will be set up, computation done, path is set up. Once the path is set up, then I will remove the ringing current, the delay will be higher. While if before even I apply the ringing current, I make the reservations and there is another possibility when you come back in the reverse direction, the resource itself might get consumed by some other call there might be contention, because you have not locked the resources. The same resource is going to be used by, same middle stress switches can be used by for multiple circuits for setting up of them. So, when you try attempting, it is like railway reservation booking, there is only two tickets available. You say I want to book, you do everything, you make the payment, your ticket is not confirmed by the time, unless you make the payment and confirmation happens. By the time somebody also tries it and he books the ticket first you would not get the ticket, but at the end of payment you will be very furious. So, in fact, what happens is uh, when you are doing this railway reservation booking, uh, you actually now reserve the resource immediately before the final confirmation, the moment you start the booking process at certain point of time when the status is there. It remains blocked for certain period and by the time nothing goes, no reservation happens or you do not come out, it will be released automatically for the next booking. So, there is a some period where the locking actually happens, it is similar kind of thing, locking of resources. In the reverse direction, because resources are already locked and identified, you have to just flip the status bit, path will be immediately start functioning. You keep on, it happens very fast and you can immediately remove the ringing uh, tone which is coming back and two people can start talking. And of course, billing will be generated by this guy, always, billing record. Hunting is part of this process, reservation. Hunting, hunting is the part of, that is why the hunting always takes more time. This but once the guy, other guy lifts the headset, it does not take time. This will be part of the reservation of this. Yes. But how many lines in exchange, um, percentage wise does it? For? I mean the exchange block control reserves certain amount of lines. One line for each call which is being made. If a call is not complete within certain time, and the resources will be released automatically. So, those status are again the control memory which I have shown. I have not actually shown other fields. There are extra fields attached to every word, memory word which is there, which even talks about the status. Because remember, location in the control memory specifies a path, it actually tells a middle stage path. It tells you exactly what is the status. So, there are actually some other extra bits which are there, which can be used in the design. But again, there is no standard on this. A standard is not required, because this whole box will be manufactured by one single manufacturer. You are not going to buy control memory from somebody else and switch from somebody else and put the things together. You buy this whole thing from one single guy, you buy another thing from another person, these two should be able to talk. So, standards are only when two different vendors are involved, interfacing between them. Single vendor thing, you do not try to do anything, because you leave it to the, uh, the imagination of the vendor or his design team will keep on innovating inside. You cannot be too, too rigid actually, but that is the way the industry actually has evolved. So, reservation is essentially in the forward direction. It's, so, most of your hunting delay which happens is because of this. So, it means all the calls get through, they get through by the reservation of path only. First the reservation happens then and reverse then there is a confirmation when the setup actually happens. That is the process, but there is no other possible way I think. In fact, uh, this does not require any technology, this is all common sense. Best way is you say, okay, I am going to design my own system. In fact, if you have ever have any confusion, you do not have books, 
you think I am going to design the system, I, how I would have designed the system. And 99 percent chances you would have designed the system exactly in same way, the way it is already being implemented. So, lot of actually you do not need to look into manuals to understand the existing system because of this. So, these are common sense ki while in the reverse path setup there will be delay. So, these guys will get annoyed actually always. Even the reverse confirmation I start putting up the delay. So, forward setup you keep the delay there is no issue, but the moment he lifts the handset it has to be almost instantaneous, because you have to start also doing the billing at the same time. You will be losing otherwise these precious seconds for which you could have built. You are actually increasing the load. So, we cannot do the pre computation in intermediate state before the coming the confirmation from reverse direction. Usually there is even a better and a smarter thing is done is not cascading thing. What usually is done is the moment this guy talks, I have not actually talked about this. Because this signaling is if it is a in band signaling, in band means oh in the voice circuit itself you do the signaling. We call it channel associated signaling. Okay. If I am using a separate packet switch network which for signaling, which is what the SS 7 does. This guy once it figures out a call has to be set up, it estimates the route, it can send a packet parallelly to each one of them there is a parallel transmission which happens. All of them will make the reservation of resources when the packets will come, it will be for certain duration and they will respond back with packets actually to this guy. Okay. If it figures out oh, I have got all the responses, the resources are through on all uh, the whole path is now clear, it just simply will send a message to him to put up the dial tone. Oh, sorry, the ringing current. The phone will ring here. Once the ringing confirmation happens, it picks up. It comes. This will simply do is nothing will send the parallel packets to all the elements parallelly. Again through SS7. SS7 is like TCP/IP, similar stack, five-layer stack. They don't call it a physical layer, network layer, data link. They call it MTP level one, MTP level two, MTP level three, and so on. So, only the name changes of the layer. Functionality wise they are all exactly same. They also use same kind of routing principles whatever we did in 673. And then they have already made the so reservation is happening parallelly now. So, call setup is still faster. Now, that is the difference between your uh, 20 years back or 25 years back. If you would have made a call and now you make a call there is a difference and difference is because of this. The most of our signaling is now on SS 7, it is not CAS. Earlier days is trouser time, it was actually still worse. You might have waited for talking only for 1 minute, but signaling and call setup might have taken 5 minutes actually. So, I do not know these uh, older systems I think are no more operational anywhere, except probably in some of your locations where you do not want to put in the money. <laughs> But in India, I think almost we are fully on SS7 and now I think in next 10 years, even SS7 will be done away with fully and we will have purely SIP. In between S.323 would have been there, but now it is all discarded out. S.323 is not picking up, because there is open source battery equivalent which is there with version 3 running currently as of now, SIP V3 which we have. And of course, with IPv6 and SIP v3, if the both thing combinations is I think is a good option always, because you have QoS support available in IPv6, which is required for this is called media transport actually. All voice transport is a media transport, it is not data transport. So, anything which is real time is a media transport, this is whether it is a voice video does not matter. And for the first time, all kind of media can be transported by same signaling, which is actually not permitted. For example, you cannot make video calls with the conventional telephony, it is not possible, because that support was never, it was basically only for voice. But SIP is general, you can actually extend all kind of media types. Okay. Now, next the D part. tracing of path, uh, digital circuits does not make sense except you try to find out whether control memory 
that memory location has gone defective or not. <laughs> there might be a byte which might go bad in a control memory. That only means that switch is actually still functional, only now the number of possibilities or intermediate options are going to be less. So, you should not use those combinations. So, this basically tracing of all possible combination, this basically used for diagnostics. So, again unidirectional and bidirectional both. E is this is the performance basically checking of path we call it, but it is basically performance analysis. Whether something has gone noisy or not, typically on the boards. So, you will be actually putting some source at the input and something at output, you set it up, you will check the performance. Okay. Tracing is you will read, you will write and then read back kind of thing to whether things have been written correctly or not in the control memories. This for exactly also setting up the path. You are looking even at the wiring, timing, synchronization, everything will get verified. Uh, what time we do the tracing of the path? Whenever the load will be less, that time will it will be done. You never do all the diagnostics and everything are never done all the time, no. Usually whenever the you will actually find out in the day is a daily kind of variation, time variation when the load is least, that time you will put the resources for all diagnostic test. It is done automatically? It is done usually automatically. This is because this can be done by this guy. This guy is sending a message corresponding to these events. But ha what happens if we uh, discover something then? He will just generate a log report, he will at least give an alarm. Somebody can come and then repair it, otherwise how you will know? You cannot go, go and manually keep on checking all paths. See, if you are going to, there are exchanges of the size of the like <coughs> 1 lakh lines almost in some big cities. 50,000 is pretty common, 50, 60,000. Well, exchanges were built of that even size, but they were having multiple switch blocks. Even IIT Kanpur here, we are going to have actually now currently, uh, I think 20,000 lines, that is what we have requested. 7,000 will be commissioned by next month end. Currently operating exchange is 6000 line, extendable to 10000, which is now going to be actually taken out apart from the service actually. So, numbers are used, 6000 line manually is going to be impossible. In fact, our fault rate should not be very large, because I cannot sustain manpower, it is not commercially viable to have large manpower to maintain. Number of phone lines at the homes, which goes bad has to be very, very small. So, number of phone equipments which goes bad has to be extremely small. So, typically the harsh conditions are put, we buy complete telephone equipments. The condition is that within first two years, if uh, more than 2 percent of the phones actually goes bad, then the whole lot has to be replaced by the manufacturer. Under that condition only you buy the telephone equipments. So, he has to give a warranty for that, we do not repair, we do not have that much of time. And telephone equipments is something which is currently is being maintained usually by the provider, but I think now it is scenario is going to change, usually you people should buy, company only provides you a port at your home, that is it. But I think still in India everywhere it is the operator which provides you the phone instrument. But they usually outsource it to directly to manufacturers and he will be making loss. So, I think the production quality of the equipment has to be extremely good. If failure rate is too high, it becomes non viable. Because the ordinary equipment on ordinary telephone, not SIP based, uh, for us, if we buy in bulk, it costs about I think 175 to 100, 200 rupees, roughly in between that. Uh, that is when we purchase with all honesty. And other government department, the cost must be actually slightly higher, not this much. <laughs> but here, because I do the negotiations, I know the price roughly. So, next is F, this is interrogation. So, whatever is the status of any path which has been set up, whether it is free, busy, clear, reserved. So, there are various status for every path. 
so they have to be modified so modification is done through these that have cleared reservation these three things basically are used for setting up all the status but these status words also have to be queried back when you are for example trying to set up a new path you have to periodically now synchronize your local status table with whatever is there actually inside the switch so these status are also maintained in the control memories here so this interrogation is typically will be for the free busy reserve three things three status Will not part a form of the interrogation and uh, reservation will hmm? come in together. No, this you are actually now setting up the values. Here you are inquiring about the values. You are inquiring. Okay, what is the current uh, status? I mean, the first <coughs> interrogation, then reservation, or yeah, usually that's the way. Interrogation is usually you are most of these. The way it will be operating, it maintains a local table. Okay. Usually, it will be, it will not be inconsistent because all setups and all release are done by this. But with time, there is always a possibility. I have to work with that. I cannot be unidirectional. Okay, okay, I have a database. Before I always send a message, I will always make the changes in the entries here. Chances are that most of the time, whatever is my status says is actually what is going to happen in reality at the other end. But the other end also can go wrong actually, some once in a while which you will find out for checking and tracing all that thing. I can still make my local database thing. But I think I will as an engineer, I will keep an extra precaution. I will always run a separate thread in the software. You will keep on querying the actual status and see if there is a mismatch. If there is a mismatch, correct it. Running a small thread is always makes a sense. I think you all understand what is a thread. So, thread is a separate. Uh, what we call sequence of execution, okay, which runs in a program. A computer actually can run multiple threads, same same exe, same binary, can run multiple separate threads which run independently of each other. Okay, so it's like multiple CPUs running, but technically one CPU it's time shared. All the threads run separately. So same thing also we have to run. It's like a computer. So exchange the way I always say is nothing but a highly specialized computer, which does all the time computation, but of a different kind. Uh, these are also known as stored program control switches, SPC. That is another term commonly used. I have never told that. So, you have now six categories. So, what will happen is, there will be six of these, there will be total 12 kind of messages, this technically means, because it is a bi-directional, unidirectional combination is there. So, 6 into 2, total 12 possibilities. And there, these message type need to be identified. Now, these messages are between this and this. Exchange control to switch block control. Switch block control to switch I have not done so far. Okay. So, usually there will be three kind of type 1 messages will be going in this direction. But remember, this is manufacturer specific. You need not follow exactly this thing. You may design your own, because whole thing will be still bought, built by one single vendor. So, it does not matter whether you use type 1, type 2, how it is. Type 1 is which is going from exchange 1 to exchange control to the switch block control. Type 2, there basically message formats will be different. Type 2 is this. And type 3 is done, given actually over hardware lines on a distributed bus, on a bus structure. So, type 3 is this. So, there is no actually no uh, message being sent over a serial communication line. This is a parallel lines. This is over a serial line. This is actually like a packet structure, proper packet structure. So, left side bit is always sent first and the lower order bit is always sent later on kind of thing. The way IP packets or other packets are identified. This one is a parallel hardware structure. So, I just quickly go through the generic message types here. So, this is the type 1 message. This always goes from exchange control to switch block control. 
you have to remember this direction this is important the reverse direction is type 2 okay and whatever you have studied in 673 or digital communication networks also applies here similar concept whatever we have done there you will actually probably appreciate some of the things because fundamentals will never change wherever you apply them they will always remain same so you will typically will have the message number every packet has a sequence number because if i transmit a duplicate i need to identify that and when i respond back i have to tell I am responding to this particular message number and what typically the message will be the op code of operation code of one of these 12 options. So, next is op code operation code. It is very similar to how you build up the instruction set. So, I am technically making instruction set targeting. Unidirectional and bidirectional two options are there in each one of thing they are total six values total 12 six into two ok. So, <coughs> next is op code, op code will be representing one of these 12 options actually. You want to set up certain thing you will write I want to do a setup and it is unidirectional or bidirectional. If it is unidirectional source and destination makes a matter and if it is bidirectional source to destination and destination to source both have to be done ok. Usually there will be some uh, it is not that software is not running here it will be like a firmware which is sitting in it is not on a computer it is an internal microprocessor which is sitting inside on the board which is going to run the show with limited capability it is will not be exhaustive computing system. So, the reason why to build a firmware to speed up the Process. You always when you, you are inserting cards in fact does not matter even your computer is on a board and whatever software you writing is you still have some firmware to bootload from some disk. Usually you would not be actually having a hard disk you would not be actually directly managing a hard disk here. Here you will be managing in fact the initial image which will be loaded will be decided by the bootloader. I think all of you do understand how a computer starts. So, there is always a BIOS and usually the initial whenever you power on a CPU there is a location to which it will be from which it will be loading the first instruction is always well specified is depends on the design of the processor ok. So, it will always go that. So, in that place usually that those address memory locations are being covered up by BIOS and now of course, there is another variant which has come. Uh, in place of BIOS and this almost very genetic usually it is a uh, non erasable kind of memory which is there. So, even if power fails anything happens you do not read or write into that. So, usually nowadays we use flash and remember when you are doing a flash upgrade because it is possible to do the upgrade of this ROMs and your computer itself can do it when it is running by switching us, but that is risky thing because if you are doing at that time if the power goes something happens your machine is gone then because there is no way you can boot reboot it back actually unless you take that chip out and flash it again from somewhere else. So, laptops typically this problem is there the power should not fail you should fully charge before you do flash upgrade or ROM upgrade same thing is true even with your mobile phones. So, whenever you do android upgrade typically says that power should be full at that point of time power failure happens you will not be able to recoup, but uh, most of the android phones have done a very smart thing. They actually have a small uh, bios which is never written what you actually flash is something which is after that. So, original boot loader is never rewritten. So, you can actually connect it to your pc and then again reflash it because for such a large number of people because number of phones will usually be larger than PCs and if this kind of thing happens it will be a problem for company to manage and when you give a warranty of one year is going to be non viable thing. So, commercial things always has to be looked into. So, 
usually again this you can reboot do anything does not matter nothing will be lost is actually firmware is flashed. Here it is always uh, when you start it will take for some time to boot load actually. The initial ROM will start the bootloader code it will then say okay I have to it will mount a disk the disk driver will be there as part of the ROM the bootloader and then from there from certain location usually is a disk sector 1 uh, cylinder 1 uh, platter 1 on that it will start loading from there some particular code size based on that then it can read the file system and from that can load the whole image and that image will be then control will be transferred you have the complete thing running okay after that here it won't be it's directly flashed onto this that's why we call it firmware firmware is never loaded again dynamically while your pc your kernel image is uh, there in your slash boot if you see well if you have go into linux file system in slash boot you will have that kernel image you can actually maintain multiple kernel image when bootloader starts you can select the kernel image that's why you can have dual boot systems but this is also possible with mobile phones because they are also now being actually built in the same fashion so you can actually have multiple os running on the same mobile phone people have done that okay. so that's the difference between firmware and a software firmware is usually is used inside so this is the op code and then of course what else is required operation code has to operate on something some parameters so in this case usually it will be input port specification and the output port specification and in the last because this can be corrupted by noise by error even if you are in a very small environment lengths are not very large i always uh, going to have a crc check some systematic code will be there which can always be verified equivalent to parity bits actually and then of course in our case i have this kind of system <laughs> i have multiple time switches so what will be my input specification input port physical port which particular input thing and then time slot number there are two things which will be important so it usually it will be time switch number and when i am taking the input it can be even very well super multiplex time switch and i may have multiple pcm pulse code pcm streams multiple events so i have to specify even uh, first of all the time switch because there is only one physical port within that what is the pcm stream code so i am just putting additionally otherwise if it's only one single event you simply can say input port and slot number so this is variable this has to be again depend on the switch there is no standard on this okay so time switch pcm stream number and then of course time slot number physical port number physical port number then physical port is time switch number remember time switch diagram So, when I say time switch number, I am giving port numbers only. But this might have multiple PCM streams coming in, that is why this additional field is being provided. So, same thing will repeat for the output. So, if I have a single E1, suppose, then, then you do not require a PCM stream number. No, but the format will be general, no, sir? Format need not be, it is a vendor specific. No? Because this equipment, this part of the exchange. This is actually one of the board which will be sitting inside the exchange. There are multiple boards connected to buses or the back plane. So, this is one of those boards actually which is there. So, what is the PCM sir? 
pulse code modulation, PCM stream, even carrier is a PCM stream. So, similarly it will be done for this particular part, for this output. So, that is a message which will be sent and this is which is fine and in response to that type 2 message will come. Uh, do you have a class after this? Hmm? Otherwise, I will take 5 more minutes and at least uh, complete with the message, uh, type 2 message also. So, type 2 message is pretty simple and of course, op code I said 12 options, so you require 4 bits here in this case. Type 2 message typically will again in the backward direction there is a separate message number. This message number is not this, then in the forward direction the messages will be numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. In the reverse also similarly message numbers will be there. If I receive 1, 2, 3, 4, but 5 is not there, 6 comes, so 5 was lost. So, I can always now refer back and then send back the information for each message number. So, I can say this is the information which is depending on what was the op code and other thing and what I want to send back. This is structure will be decided by that and usually this is the reference message number. So, this information is about this message number which was received. So, when the reverse direction when this will be going this went this way, this reference message number will be just simply copied from here if I am talking about this. For example, I say reserve the path from this port to this port with this thing this was received correctly. Reverse direction then I will copy this message number here, put my own message number depending on whatever is, whatever is my sequence. I might put an information it was successful, path has been reserved from this port to this port kind of thing some encoding will be there for the messages, it is not a text message, it is an encoded compressed message and then ultimately you will have a CRC, some error detecting code has to be there. Error correction usually is not used because you can always ask for a retransmission and this is always a response, this is always a response, the initiator is always this. So, when it sends there is a response, this can keep on responding, this can send multiple responses for every request. How to identify the response of this particular forward direction? Reference, reference number is there, I can put same reference number send multiple responses. See that is why this does not have a reference number to this message, you have to understand. That is why when it sends this message in response to this, this will never do this is always the initiator, other person is always the respond, responder. So, the slave is this and master is this, this is the reference message num number is because of this, so that is a typical uh, what we call pattern which will be there in master slave configuration. Okay. So, I think next is the hardware part type 3 thing which is managed from here to switch. So, I think that is a very small thing. So, what we will do is we will discuss this thing in the next lecture and uh, on Monday okay. and if I can finish it before uh, within that lecture then we will start with uh, what we call input and output quid, uh, quid actually switches the performance of them. We will now start basically with packet switching. I want to create packet switch. I will take simply a crossbar, apply the packets at the input, synchronize once and see how the input queuing or output queuing, which one of them is better, how to make an estimate. Uh, some mathematics actually will be required, I hope each one of you have already done, especially movement generating functions and all that stuff you must be aware of, must have done it some place in some course. If it is not there, I will give the reference and you can study at that time. Sir? Here you assume that uh, this is right cyclic, read as cyclic, and so will there be any difference in configuration if I means, uh, see there is an advantage because then type 3 thing I require less an amount of lines if I use this. Thing. You can do it other way around also, but you will be investing 
you will be actually adding more copper onto your board, your board size will be larger. So, as a manufacturer you will be losing. So, your competitor if he is going to make a cheaper one you will lose the market. You try to reduce every wire, every line which is there on the board as far as possible in your design. You try to reduce path, you try to reduce computation, every bit counts because this is going to be replicated large number of times. So, you have to be cost conscious. So, cost consciousness always has to come from the day one when you start on your drawing board. It cannot that you build up the design and later on you will start doing the cost cutting now, it cannot happen. Do not do cost cutting, I say still cost optimization. So, engineering and science there is one major difference is science, in science you never do look for optimization. Engineering means optimization reducing the cost, so that it is becomes viable, commercially viable for more number of people. Otherwise, it will only be can be used by the kings, common people would not get the phone. <laughs> so, we have been trying to reduce cost, the whole telecom, in fact whole networking which I have been telling is nothing but reducing cost by sharing, sharing the links. So, anything which is dedicated to you, I am trying to minimize on that, so the cost can go down. And that is true I think in every engineering sector. Type 3 is a hardware message being sent from here to the switch, switching elements. What are those? Uh, this is not structured because there is a serial communication. From here to here usually there will be serial line. Maybe parallel I do not, it does not matter to me. It can be USB. So, you will start from this bit and you will send, it is a serial transmission of bit. You have to do framing, deframing, everything will be involved in this case and then you will interpret that. But from here it will be actually sent on the bus, it is like there is a bus on which you will send, in the back line you will be putting up the cards of these. Yes, sir, suppose I want to transmit the type 2 message hmm. thrice for example, okay. so the, the message number will be the same in three cases, only my reference number will be. No, changed. reference number for example, for this message number 1 was sent, it resulted in generation of three type 2 messages. All three type 2 messages will now be numbered 1, 2, 3 in the reverse direction, this message number, but they all should be referring to message number 1. So, reference number should be common. Uh, it depends, you are responding to which particular type 1 message, you are telling that specifically, because there is a slave, it, it does not do anything on its own. You send the command, it responds, you do not give the ask for anything. So, there is no pull, it is everything is pushed. So, this guy, other guy has to push the all commands, all control actions. 